It was always our intention to add an annual inspection. Uh, it, uh, it may have moved it up a little bit, but the important thing was our goal is to register every group home in the city. Those group homes that don't come forward and register, we will assume uh, that we have problems with. Uh, and it, once we get them registered, it will start the inspection program. And we believe this will make a safer community for those people who live in group homes. But it will also be uh, a, provide some comfort to families who uh, allow their family members into these group homes. As we've heard from folks in the community, they, I guess, have some expectation that there's some monitoring of these facilities and up until today there has not been. This is a big step forward for the city of Houston. I'll, I'll point out that uh, we have been doing a number of things over the last few years to focus on uh, quality of life for the most vulnerable citizens we have. Uh, from beefing up our mental health unit, beefing up our homeless outreach efforts, working on Things like group homes, and we just made a presentation this week on wage theft. It's part of a consistent plan to make Houston a better place for those who have the fewest resources and the most needs. Well, there, there are penalties in the ordinance. But again, we're going to give a, there's a little bit of a grace period. We, we're, we're giving them time to, to come forward and register. Uh, and as we've said consistently, the first thing we need, and I'm going to ask the council member to talk about this a little bit because this is his baby. He's, he's really carried the ball on it. No, we're only working on it together. I don't mean that. No, I'm to what I said. We're working on it together. But this is his passion, and he was willing to get down the weeds and work on this. The, the goal is voluntary compliance. But once we have the, the registry in place and uh, we have the opportunity to do inspections, I predict that there will still be a number of group homes out there that are going to try to fly under the radar. And what I've talked about to civic associations is that we want to publish this registry and we think the best way to find these under the radar group homes is to have folks out in the neighborhoods look at the list and say, uh, wait a minute, I know there's a group home around the corner. Why isn't it on this list? And help us police this. But, but Councilman? Yes, thank you, Mayor. I think uh, we already have a good idea of where the 400 plus or so are in the city already. So we're going to engage to make sure we bring them into compliance. And so we feel that we'll, we already have an idea of where most of them are. Uh, as the Mayor stated, a lot of these are fly by night, so they're going to be very transitional and be moving around. So part of it, we're going to have to keep chasing those bad actors. But at least now we'll be able to bring a lot of the good actors into compliance. We'll be working with them, and many of them, uh, obviously, they can be a good source of information on where some of the other ones are. And as the mayor stated, now that we are having greater dialogue on this, the community will also be uh, a vested partner in this as well because they'll be able to know that there's a point of contact within the city that they can reach out to before there really wasn't that, that dialogue. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez. And if they do not register, obviously, uh, and then we identify where they're at now. Uh, the uh, mental health division has the, the traffic cop on this city will now be able to go and engage with them directly and be able to let them know, give them notice that there is a city process and we'll be able to come back and re-inspect now and, and use, utilize existing ordinance that are already in place if they're operating without a permit, if they're uh, you know, failing to get the necessary uh, the general fire inspection that's required now. Uh, they'll be able to use a lot more tools now because before unless they were responding just to a crime, uh, there wasn't much more they could really follow up with because there wasn't an ordinance in place as a mayor state. Now there is a tool for them to use to engage that group home in, in, in dialogue and bring them into compliance, give them notice if you want. And it is our intention, you know, it is our intention to come back in, in a year and say, uh, is the ordinance working as intended? Do we need to strengthen it or ready to strengthen it? Because this is never, was never intended to be the last step in the process. It's the first step. 
in uh, a process. As the police department, as the police department said this week, uh, that's a kidnapping case in in our view. However, we believe this ordinance may help prevent situations like that because it will give families an opportunity or individuals an opportunity to say, "I'm looking for a group home. I can go to the city's registry and find the group homes. I can go to the city's registry and find the group homes that have been cited." where there have been numerous calls for service, I can find the bad ones. And it will also, you know, someone in that neighborhood had to have seen at some point uh, those poor guys that were, were locked up. It, it, it gives a mechanism for someone to report and we can go in and inspect. Oh, Mayor, don't the permit department, don't the permit department keep track of these operations as they come online? It's never been required either under state law or local ordinance for any uh, registry of these kinds of group homes. These are not halfway houses, so they're not uh, parolees, which are regulated. Uh, and other than that, uh, these are uh, operating uh, unlicensed businesses. So if they're found committing a crime of one sort or another, are these just... If they are found committing a crime, and the kinds of crime, again, the majority of group homes are perfectly legitimate businesses and they provide a really necessary service, but there are certain abuses that take place. And one of the most common abuses is that instead of establishing a rate for the, the resident, where they, they pay a certain amount every month, and for that they get some sort of room and board and, and a certain amount of treatment, that the group home takes the resources coming into that person, whether it's Social Security or a pension check, which may be far and above what the actual cost of providing care is, and they pocket the money, and they provide substandard care. That's the, the, the most common abuse. The situation that we saw this week, uh, again, uh, they were held in, in captivity, literally in captivity, and, and that is a whole separate set of crimes. It may have started as an abusive group home, but it clearly went uh, into the realm of, of uh, severe felonies. So we'll uh, I'll say that real quick as well. Uh, HPD noted in their presentation that of the ones that they know are in existence, uh, there's a percentage of them, I don't remember that number that are driving a huge amount of cost for service and a lot of resources that are being directed that way because of the substandard conditions. Many are being displaced out into the community, the individuals. And so there is already an inherent cost that we've been kind of taken up without holding these homes accountable. Now there is going to be that accountability. They'll be able to focus on those ones that are the chronic users of, of cost for service and we'll be able to hopefully minimize those and, and at the same time bringing up the, the care of the individuals that are in that home. So we see many benefits to the, the, the ones that were committing crimes, basically pocketing Social Security checks uh, that come come in or, or mistreating or providing substandard care, that's already a crime. And we could already uh, enforce that if we know about it. This gives us a mechanism to know about it earlier in the process, and it gives a mechanism for, a mechanism for the good homes to register, and uh, we can uh, provide that information back out in the, the community too because uh, having been in that situation as many families are where you're looking for some place to place uh, particularly an aged uh, but maybe a disabled family member you're, you're desperate for knowing where to go and those resources just aren't out there this will give you uh, it's not the direct intent this is for enforcement but it'll give you an opportunity to see what's available where and what their record is in order uh, the mayor said it, but, but uh, I didn't think uh, it was emphasized enough. What this administration has done, under her leadership, frankly, I, she should be commended. When you look at the work of sobering centers, now group homes, the uh, increased funding to stabilize the chronic consumer stabilization initiative, and the formation of the mental health division, is really unprecedented. Uh, no other administration has, frankly, done more for this vulnerable population uh, dealing with the mentally ill. You know that, that this administration has done, and I think it's really going to transform and help lives because we're really making a difference and addressing the core issues 
that are really happening. We're not just throwing more, uh, more money into the problem without tangible results. We'll see tangible results with all of these initiatives. And if you look at it collectively, I think, again, it's unprecedented. And, 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 and the mayor and this council should really be committed for that to really make it a difference. So how long will be the enforcement aspect for the mental health issues that we see? Yeah,